माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज दीपक कुमार एंड टुडे आई शेल बी डिस्कसिंग विद यू डस्ट ऑफ स्नो अ ब्यूटिफुल पोम दैट इज रिटन बाय रॉबर्ट फ्रॉस्ट सो लेट स्टार्ट द वे अ क्रो शुक डाउन ऑन मी द डस्ट ऑफ स्नो फ्रॉम अ हेमलॉक ट्री हैज गिवन माई हार्ट अ चेंज ऑफ मूड एंड सेव सम पार्ट ऑफ अ डे आई हैड रूड द पोम इज वेरी स्मॉल right so the poet was dejected in a dejected mood he was sad and he was walking and the way he was walking he uh, the way a crow shook down on me so the crow shook down on him uh, the dust of snow from a hemlock tree hemlock tree hemlock is a poisonous plant or tree with small white flowers so the crow was sitting on that tree and when the poet came under the tree the crow shook down on him the dust of snow from the tree and this simple act by crow who was sitting on the hemlock tree has given his heart a change of mood his mood was changed because of this small in small incident small act by by crow and saved some part of the day that he had he held in regret the poet held in regret some part of the day it was saved so he talks about how a small insignificant insignificant event in nature can have an impact can have a large impact on our mind right my dear students in the class i have already explained the poem in detail right so i will not speak about the poem in length rather i will discuss uh, some of the important question and answers and literary devices used by the poet here so enjambment is used in the line uh, let me tell you about enjambment enjambment in poetry it means moving over from one line to another without a terminating punctuation mark see the way a crow shook down on me here you cannot find out you can easily find out that there is no any punctuation mark used by the poet the way a crow shook down on me the dust of snow from a hemlock tree so here you can find out there is no any obstruction no, no any punctuation mark is used here no any terminating punctuation mark is used so enjambment is used and in the first stanza second line assonance is used assonance repetition of vowel sound shook down on me so repetition of o sound so assonance is used here right now talking about the next next stanza uh rest you need to find out let me let me give you some more examples of uh, assonance men sell the wedding bells men sell the wedding bells repetition of uh, here you can find out repetition of e sound vowel sound so assonance is used here okay now example of alliteration whisper words of wisdom let it be here repetition of consonant sound alliteration whisper words of wisdom w wo whisper words wo sound whisper words of wisdom okay now my dear students let me tell you one more very important literary device that you may not find in this poem but you should know the literary device is Cisura, cisura, C A E S U R A, cisura. What is cisura? It is a pause near the middle of a line of poetry. It is a pause near the middle of a line in a line of poetry. I request you to search about this with the help of internet. Okay, dear. Now, let me discuss some of the question and answers of this poem. Dust of snow that is written by. Uh, robert frost okay so what is a dust of snow what does the poet say it uh, say has changed his mood how has the poet's mood changed the dust of snow means the fine particles of flakes or flakes of snow the sudden shower in the form of the dust of snow changed the poet's mood the poet's mood changed from sad to happy he felt refreshed and wanted to enjoy the rest of the day question number 2 how has the poet observed nature in the poem dust of snow robert frost was a nature lover the crow and the hemlock tree are associated with ill omens but forest has presented them so but frost has presented them so beautifully they bring cheer to him and are a source of joy through his poem he conveys a very strong message that everything around us is beautiful question number 3 what does the poet robert frost want to convey through the poem dust of snow 
answer. The poet Robert Frost, through his poem Dust of Snow, wants to convey what the that the little things can make huge changes in our life. The simple things we do can make all the difference and brighten a person's day. Question number four. What are the symbols of sadness or sorrow in the poem? Give reasons. Answer. The crow and the hemlock tree could be seen as the symbols of sadness because a crow is black like a black mood and the hemlock tree is poisonous. However, the poet uses the elements of the black fearsome crow and the poisonous hemlock tree to do something good. Question number five. Are the events in this poem written in a chronological order? Support your answer with evidence from the text. Answer. The events in this poem are not written in a chronological order. In a chronological order, the first thing that happened was whatever made the speaker regret the day. Then the speaker is seen standing under the hemlock tree when the dust of snow fell on him, making his mood better and saving some part of the day. Question number six. And saved some part of a day, I had root explained. Answer. The poet was feeling depressed and hopeless, so he was not in a good mood. He was standing under a hemlock tree when suddenly a crow, a crow shook dust of snow on him. This small and simple incident changed his mood. He realized the fact that he was wasting his time, so he decided to enjoy the remaining part of the day. Question number seven. Why was the poet standing under the hemlock tree? Answer. The poet was feeling very depressed and hopeless. He was in a state of sorrow. As he was lost in his thoughts, he happened to be standing under the hemlock tree. The incident was not pre-planned. My dear students, now I'm going to discuss some questions from long answer type questions. Okay. Question number one. Small things in life make significant changes in our life. Elaborate with reference to the poem Dust of Snow. Answer. The poem Dust of Snow reiterates that the little things in life can make huge changes in our future. It also shows that if we, can, if we take the hard times of life in stride, eventually something will happen to change our situation into happier times. The simple things that we do for others can make all the difference. Just think about those random acts of kindness that we do and then observe how much they brighten a person's day and sometimes change his future. My dear students, let me tell you one more example in the chapter from the chapter The Happy Prince. In that chapter, you must have observed when uh, the bird swallow did a nice task, did a generous task for the Happy Prince and helped that, uh, uh, helped uh, the boy, the seamstress, by giving the, the ruby, the sword hilt to, uh, to, uh, to the boy, then he was feeling warm. And then Happy Prince said that you are feeling warm, you are feeling nice because you have done a great thing today. You help others. So if, when you help others, you will generally feel the pleasure, the, the happiness that is very difficult to find others, to find uh, 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 at, uh, at other places. Noticing and appreciating all the small things in life will make our life happier. It will also cause us to have a spirit that is willing to change and therefore succeed. Question number two. Have there been times when you felt depressed or hopeless? Have you experienced a similar, similar moment that changed your mood that day? Matter, this is totally a personal question that you are supposed to answer in your own words, but let me give you the, the sample answer. There have been innumerable times when I too felt depressed and hopeless. Sometimes such moments were aroused by other people's behavior and attitude, while sometimes due to my own conduct. On one occasion when I was too upset, I went, I went out for a walk. While walking in the park, I saw a girl playing with a puppy, embracing and feeling and feeding him. This little joy that they shared changed my mood and I felt greatly happy for the rest of the day. I also joined the two and played with them. Question number three. Nature has the power to lift our mood even when we are highly despondent. Comment on the basis of your understanding of the poem Dust of Snow. The poet Dust of Snow by Robert Frost appears to be a nature, a nature poem. 
However, Frost has beautifully depicted a crow and a hemlock tree that are usually associated with bad omens, but Frost uses them to uplift his mood. In other words, everything in this world is beautiful. Nature has the power to lift our mood even when we are highly despondent. It gives us hope. A small incident of the snow falling on the poet took away the pull of sadness and changed his mood immediately. Question number four. How does Frost present nature in this poem? The following question may help you to think of an answer. The first question. What are the birds that are usually named in poems? Do you think crow is often mentioned in poems? What images come to your mind when you think of a crow? Frost presents nature in a quite different manner in the poem. Number one. Generally, poets take the birds and trees which are known for their beauty and good qualities like peacock, parrot, cuckoo, mina and trees full of beautiful flowers and fruits, etc. But here Frost has taken an altogether different approach. The next is, again, what is a hemlock tree? Why doesn't the poet write about more beautiful trees such as a maple or an oak or a pine? He chose a crow which is not often used in poems. Crow is a black in color with too harsh voice and is believed to be a symbol of ill omen. Thinking of a crow brings very depressing and sorrowful pictures to our mind. A hemlock tree is a poisonous plant with small white flowers. The poet Robert Frost didn't choose to use an oak, maple or pine tree. Instead, he chose the hemlock tree and, and left all the beautiful tree, trees present in the world. Actually, he did so to present his mood and feelings. Okay, what do the crow and hemlock represent joy and, joy and sorrow? What does the dust of snow and the crow shakes of a uh, hemlock tree stand, stand for? The crow and hemlock tree represent sorrow and depression felt by the poet in this materialistic world. The dust of snow is the symbol of natural joy and energy. The dust of snow that the crow shakes of a hemlock tree means passing through the sad and depressing moments. The poet is, inter is entering into the time which is full of joy and optimism. Okay, my dear students, that's all from today's class. I request and I hope you will listen to the audio content and go through the text. If you have any problem, convey the same to me. Thank you.